you know, the collaborative thing really came more into play for the whole band when it was the became the revolution. Uh, Des Dickerson had left. You know, Des, you know, did wrote songs with Prince too. We all did. We all had stuff that we did, but not a ton. Okay, not a lot. And then Purple Rain happened, and that's when he really incorporated the group on uh, at least half the album or more we were we were tracking. In fact, when we tracked the basic tracks for that record, it was done live at First Avenue Club where we debuted those songs we'd been rehearsing for the movie for that summer of 1983. So that show took place August 3rd, 1983 at First Avenue, and it was recorded on a... Uh, to a recording truck out in the... Yeah, David Z recorded David it. recorded it in the alley next door. He and, drove a truck from out here, actually. Yeah, uh, I think it was from out here. And the, the actual uh, song Purple Rain had an extra verse that was edited out from that version. Oh, wow. For the final movie version. And then strings, live strings were overdubbed. Yeah, we did all that here in Studio yes, 3. Yes, exactly. And you... Uh, you have a lot of writing credits, but a lot of these songs would sometimes be kind of formulated in rehearsal too. Yeah. Um, or even Purple soundtrack. Rain was, the song Purple Rain, uh, uh, the song Computer Blue. When's the first time you heard Purple Rain? When he brought it to rehearsal. At the warehouse? The warehouse in Flying St. Louis Lotus. Park. Yeah. No, no, there was another one in St. Louis Park that we okay. were, were in my hometown actually, in my home suburb. Was it a tape or he played it for you? He just brought it in to, to play it. Uh, not on tape. It was he was just said, "Here's some chords, and I'm going to sing you this melody. I don't have the lyrics done yet. I want you all to start playing it. What you want to put on this, and that's how that came together." What does it feel like to hear something in its infancy like that, and it's one of the biggest? And then you hear it at the Super Bowl, and it's like billions of people are watching it. It's special to you, isn't it? It's extre- yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. fame, the money, the cool touring, and everything. But it's like you were there. And heard Purple Rain when it was just a you know a G and a Z, exactly. So it, you know no, it's it's really something. And when you when you when when we first heard the final mixes of that record and and we knew it was going to be put into this film and uh, we were just all hopeful and knew that it would it would do well. We just were hoping though that it would be successful. Yeah, it's all you can do. You know, you, you believe in it. And you hear it and you go, this is fantastic stuff, Prince. You, you, I mean, you've outdone yourself again. Creatively watching him. Totally. Watching him create in a studio where you're just blown away every day. Uh, oh, totally, See, totally. Yeah. And well, when I, first is, when I heard the first album, the first time I heard it, just the opening piece of him singing that a cappella church godlike ethereal vocal of his falsetto singing for you, that just that, I mean, nobody did that. It, I, I just was, I was like, what is this? It was, it, I had the same reaction I had when I brought Sergeant Pepper home at the age of nine and played it for the first time. Same thing. Yeah. A question I have to ask is, and I never understood, and even for the engineers, it was difficult. He would say, if the groove is there, nothing else matters. Meaning a lot of this stuff was one take sometimes. Why would he not take time to really tighten it up? In I your opinion. I have no idea. I never asked him. It was just burn through. You got it down. Good. Let's go. Oh, I listened to raw tracks on stuff from time to time. I'd get in the studio if I needed to make a, a special version mix for myself to hear what he did on the keyboards to bring him out in the mix. I'd listen to stuff and I'd hear all kinds of flaws. But then in the in the mix, it disappears. It's really interesting. And and rhythmically, if there's something was slightly off, it would still work. Yeah. You know, if everything's it's the human feel, whatever that is. But it was never there was never anything blatant. You know, if there was something blatant, I'm sure he repair, he fix it at the time. But you could still hear the you know warts and all, and it still worked great. You know. Yeah, he would kick everybody out when he did vocals. Yeah, I knew that. I knew about that, See, which was also interesting. An interesting way he did things. <laughs> I think he he didn't want anybody like watching him. I mean, he had to he. I think it was something psychological, obviously, for him to be alone in there for to really get his emotions flowing properly and not feel uncomfortable with somebody sitting there running the tape machine and being there or maybe says something. It can, you know, there's a concentration level I felt he must have wanted yeah. to really emote properly. Do you remember Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis coming around at those in those days? 
they really were involved, obviously, for, let's see, the first album was like, what about Dirty Mind era? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and we toured with them. So yeah, they were they were hanging out a bit, but not so much because they were off in their own rehearsal world, whatever they were doing. Sure. I yeah. just saw Jimmy Jam at... Uh, I just saw him Tuesday night. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's everywhere. Yeah. He is everywhere. And I... Yeah. It was Dave Chappelle's Grammy party down oh, the street okay. from here. And yeah. I was like, we got to get you to come in here and tell some stories. Because Studio 3 in the hallways where they were canned by Prince, which was such a blessing in disguise. For them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Even if they'd stayed longer with the time, they still would have been successful as producers, no matter what. I mean, yeah. they, they would have just done something fantastic, I'm sure. The film Purple Rain, um, obviously management, Prince come to you and they're like, hey, Warner Brothers wants to do a film now. Um, yeah, he took me aside personally uh, one morning on the 1999 tour. I was I was sitting in the hotel. We were on tour and or at the restaurant. He came over and sat with me and just struck up a conversation and said, "So uh, I've been thinking about doing a movie." I go, "A movie? What do you mean? Like a like a rock and roll film? Like a rock and roll, you know, thing?" And he goes, "Yeah." I mean, with a plot, though, with a plot and song. Yeah, with a plot. Because I'm thinking, oh, is it going to be a live thing or just a live, like Sign of the Times eventually, you know, when he did that. But no, he, he said, no, we're doing an actual film with a plot and everything, people acting, the whole thing. And well, that, I, perfect. I'm on board. Go for it. Why not? Yeah. And you're uh, in the movie. <laughs> what's that? You got a line in the movie, too. Yeah, and I got a line in the movie. <laughs> Actually, I had more lines, but they got cut out of the script for Fuckers. some reason. But darn okay but anyway, <laughs> but anyway um i was i was a little concerned because obviously he, he i didn't know how he could act or i mean i knew interacting with him his personality could be part of the good acting routine if you really you know if you just be himself that could work and he was pretty much but i in the movie i could tell he was acting you know a little bit because you know yeah, yeah, it felt a little forced here and there, but that was fine. That's how you got to be, you know. And but yeah, I was worried, you know. I was like, oh boy, I hope he can pull this off. You know, we all did. We were all concerned. And then it was difficult for his management to really sell the idea to Warner Brothers mm -hmm. as well, because they thought, well, you know, yeah, you here, this album's done great. Yeah, you've sold mil you know several million. That's good. But we don't know if you're well known enough to support a, a rock and roll film. You know, like a, like the way Mick Jagger, or David Bowie had done already, but the way they got it done was his management said, "How about if we kick in a lot of the funding? You guys kick in some of the funding, and then we get a bigger percentage or something if it succeeds." Yeah. And they went they went with it. Wow! And it and it succeeded. It's like the film Rocky. Uh, you know, yeah. Sylvester Stallone was pretty much homeless. He wrote that script. I uh, took it to a studio. They loved it. They mm -hmm. go, but we don't want you. And that's they wanted Purple Rain script too. They just didn't want. Um, they were going to put Travolta in that. I heard. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> they tell Sylvester, "Hey, we love it. We'll give you a hundred grand, but you're not in it. You know, we don't even know you. You talk weird." A month later, he comes back. I want to do this film. Like, we don't want you. We'll give you 150 now. They go all the way up to three hundred thousand dollars to to Sly and say we did not see you in this wow and he said well i'm not doing it unless i am the lead character i wrote this for me yeah and they gave him thirty thousand dollars and said okay you can be in it that went on to be best picture best actor best editing same thing with you know purple rain i mean it's you know 80s kind of cheesy flick but you know it's such an iconic piece of american pop culture and just yeah. the t-shirts and the posters and still to this day i mean there's a mega producer here now that's wearing one in Studio 3, just Purple Rain. But the only thing about... The marketing of it. Yeah, but the only thing about now, when you go back and look at the film, it, it's dated in the sense of some of the misogyny that took place in the film. You know, it's a little... Like, like, because you have this much bigger awareness of, of sexual abuse and misogyny and, and mm. women saying, you know, you, 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 you can't treat me like that anymore. And I agree that that's unacceptable... Uh, and you know, there's a scene where Morris Day take, gets mad at some girl right at the beginning of the film and takes her and puts her in a dumpster, you know, <laughs> physically lifts her up and puts her. So like, you look now and you go, okay, that was funny at the time slapsticky, but I don't think you might get canceled if you did something like that now, Yeah, you know, and he, and, and, you know, and Morris in particular was 
was viewed to me more like womanizing in the film than Prince was. So that's that's the only part now in hindsight that's not jibing with current trends. <laughs> Yeah. For you, was that pretty exciting? Because you're from Minneapolis, you know, you get uh, Minneapolis's, you know, golden child kind of is rising up and you're a part of that. And, yeah. you know, you're in your hometown and now you're shooting a film there. It's an exciting time. You're a young guy, you're a musician. It was cool, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. It's very and it exciting. hit you so quickly, too. I mean, a few years, it's like you join the band, do a few records, a few tours, and then boom, now there's a film. And then Purple Rain, the film, blows the whole thing up then. Yeah. So then you're doing stadiums at that point, right? Headlining? Yeah, yeah. And Arenas and stadiums, depending on the city. Who is Prince at that point then? After the film, he turns into, you know, I've heard the stories around here, you know, the Rolls Royce starts coming around, the bodyguards, everything. He's just... Yeah. Did he change um, as a leader, as a, as a friend, as a musician to you, or was he just still... He became more distant because he was so busy all the time, you know, so he didn't have as much time for socializing but when we would be on tour he he loved to hang with us at, you know do after show parties with us or jam and play or whatever he he was always into hanging out with us yeah when he could but yeah there was less there was definitely less of that no question and the relationship at times felt more like boss employee kind of thing too yeah to be able to sit there though uh you know, on a keyboard or a synth with him, just you two and kind of figure stuff out and create. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like so special. Yeah, I mean, I mean, very fortunate. I'm so grateful to have met him. That's all I can say. One of those things. Why did the revolution break up? Mm -hmm. 